how much yellow is too much yellow? Well, apparently there's no such thing as too much. Not if you win the Tour de France anyway. Here's a closer look at some of the Tour de France winning bikes from the past decade or so. We've picked out our favorites. Now it's time for you to choose yours. When a rider takes the leader's jersey at the Tour de France, teams and mechanics quickly honor the achievement with special bikes and accessories. Among the many perks of winning the Tour de France, one is undoubtedly getting to ride around Paris on a special yellow bike to match the Melo Jaune. Sometimes with a glass of bubbly and often at a pretty leisurely pace. If you want to see how we'd change the Tour de France, then click on the video up there. Admittedly, as Team Sky slash Ineos have won the Tour de France seven times since 2010, this roundup is a bit of a Pinarello fest. But there's some absolute corkers that we'd completely forgotten about. So stick around for them. Alberto Contador won the Tour de France in 2007 and 2009 and kind of won it in 2010, but then got it stripped after failing a doping test. I trawled through the archives and came across this garish special edition Specialized S-Works tarmac ridden by Contador in 2010, complete with a self-portrait on the top tube. How about that? If you didn't notice the self-portrait, you're sure to know it's his thanks to the red Dachau's saying Contador down the seat post, seat tube, seat stay and chain stay. On to some components, Contador used a SRAM group set and zip wheels complete with yellow decals and specialised cranks and stem also basking in yellow paint. We asked our tech team to review the bike based on looks alone. Matt gave it a 6, Stu a 5, Tass a 4 and I thought about a 6. I absolutely love tarmacs from this era but the paint just isn't doing it for me. Yellow and red are two colors that I wouldn't personally put together and the Road CC team seemed to agree. In 2011, it was Cadell Evans's turn to turn up on a custom yellow bike for the final stage of the tour. And he didn't disappoint with this BMC T-Machine SLR01. At the time, the SLR01 was BMC's flagship model and Evans's bike was complete with Shimano Durace Di2, an SRM power meter, Eastern EA90 stem, Eastern EC90 bars with yellow handlebar tape and an Eastern carbon wheel set finished off nicely, you guessed it, with yellow decals. Finishing touches included yellow speedplay pedals and a yellow Physique Antez saddle. Matt I think was a bit harsh on this one, he gave it a 5, Stu an 8 and Tassa a 5. I'm going to give it an 8.5. This one had the Road CC team torn. but. Yeah, it's an eight and a half from me because it's definitely yellow but far less gaudy than Contador's and a bike that I'd absolutely love to ride. Let us know what you think down in the comments section below. Throughout the 2012 edition of the Tour de France, Team Sky were riding the Pinarello Dogma 2, but Wiggins made the switch to the Pinarello Dogma 65.1 Think 2 for the final stage. This was unveiled ahead of the Tour. The frame design was similar to the Dogma 2 with Pinarello's trademarked on the wavy fork and seat stays. But the 65.1 used, well, 65 ton HM 1K carbon fiber, which was said to be more rigid, more reactive and lighter. Wiggins's, Wiggins's? Wiggins's setup included Shimano Durace Di2 7970 group set, those awful osymmetric chain rings, Shimano C50 wheel set, and a pro cockpit with yellow bar tape. Matt gave this one a six, Stu a six, Tass a four, and I'm gonna go with a four and a half. It's not a high scoring bike from the Road CC team, that's for sure. Let's hope some of the other Pinarellos on the list can do a bit better. Like Wiggins, Chris Broom's custom yellow bike was a Pinarello Dogma 65.1 Think 2. He had been riding a yellow accented Dogma during his time in the Melo Jaune, but swapped it for this complete yellow build for the final stage. However, unlike Wiggins, Broom opted for black bar tape, saddle and pedals, not quite going all out on the yellow. I'm going to give this one a five. I do think that this is ever so slightly better looking than Wiggins is, but really only just. It's still not a looker really, is it? That seagull would shit all over that bike. <laughs> Take it from me. Specialized delivered this customized tarmac for 2014 Tour de France winner Vincenzo Nibali for the final stage of the race. They stayed clear of the obvious route of painting everything yellow, the matching black base color with yellow decals and graphics. Corima delivered yellow stickered wheels to match the frame. Look did the same with the pedals and Campagnolo supplied yellow hoods for the super record mechanical group set. FSA provided yellow stem, handlebar and seat post to match the build. It's a bit less garish than the all yellow Pinarello Dogma bikes that Wigo and Chris Broom rode in 2012 and 2013 respectively. And in our eyes, that's a good move. 
So far, I think this is our highest scoring bike. Matt scored it an eight, Stu an eight, Tass a six. I don't know what she was looking at. And I'm gonna give it an 8.5. Now that is how you do a custom bike. Ah, oh boy, another Pinarello. Excellent. Chris Froome won the yellow jersey at the Tour de France for three consecutive years, 2015, 2016, and 2017. With this came quite the collection of yellow bikes. So we've picked one out of his three winning streak. Yeah, it's the Pinarello Dogma F8. The Dogma F8 was almost identical to the bike Froome rode in 2015. It was the Italian's company's first aero road bike developed with Team Sky partner Jaguar and became the main race bike for the team. Froome's yellow bikes all featured the Rhino motif on the top tube, a nod to his roots and his support for the Unite for Wildlife charity that was set up to put an end to the illegal wildlife trade. A good cause, but not the prettiest logo. Let's see what the Road CC team rated this one. Matt gave it a four, Stu a four, Tass a five. I'm gonna go with the common answer of four. This one hasn't fared well with our overly harsh team of reviewers. No doubt, at least partially due to that awful rhino. Oh, come on, we've had enough of Pinarellos now. This one, I think, is the Pinarello Dogma F10 X Lite that Geraint Thomas used to win the gruelling 2018 edition of the Tour de France. The Dogma F10 X Lite was about 60 grams lighter than the standard Dogma F10, thanks to its slightly more expensive carbon fibre layout, but it did have exactly the same tube profiles and all of that as the standard bike. Thomas had a one-piece Talon handlebar made by Most on this one, the component brand that is owned by Pinarello and chose a 130 mil length stem. The whole lot was dunked in yellow paint and finished off with some yellow bar tape. The Dogma frame was completed with Shimano Durace Di2 R 9150 group set, Shimano Durace C60 wheels, and a Physique Arioni R1 saddle. Might surprise you, this one was rim brake. Most of the other teams had already moved over to disc brakes by now. This one scores sevens across the board. We reckon ditching the yellow stem and bar tape could have made this one a winner. Where's Bruce Forsyth when you need him? We could have got him to give us a seven. Okay, we promised that this is the last Pinarello, but this one is Egan Bernal's Pinarello Dogma F12. And of course, it's complete with handwritten congratulations from Pinarello boss, Fausto Pinarello. Bernal used regular Durace C60 wheels, despite the lightweight Mylenstein wheels being used for mountain stages. There was also a Shimano Durace Di2 group set with 53 39 tooth chainset, 1130 cassette at the back, and a Shimano power meter. He used the new Most Talon Carbon Aero one piece handlebar and stem. Well, it was new at the time anyway. 13 centimeter stem and 40 centimeter wide handlebars. Happen to know that, don't know why. He also used Shimano pedals. He really was a Shimano fanboy, wasn't he? Matt gave this one a seven, Stu an eight, Tass a five. Tass just loves disagreeing with the rest of us. And I'm gonna give it a 7.5. Obviously this one is very similar to G's from the year before, but I'm gonna rate it just slightly higher, mainly, well, for the simple reason of that black stem rather than yellow. You can see what we thought of the latest Dogma F compared to the other Tour de France bikes using the link in the card up there. Seagulls are loving this video. With Tadej Pogacar winning in 2020 and 2021, again, we've picked one of the two bikes. We've gone for the considerably yellower 2020 bike. 2020 was the year that a rider on a Conargo with rim brakes and Campagnolo super record group set won the Tour de France. Although admittedly, it was Conargo's K1 time trial bike that Tadej Pogacar actually, well, used to take the shock victory over compatriot Primoz Roglic on stage 20, the penultimate stage. That must have been absolutely gutting for Roglic. This was a significant victory for Colnago as well, as this was the first time a rider had won the world's biggest bike race on a bike that actually had the brand's name on it. Now, Eddie Merckx won numerous tour titles on bikes designed and made by Colnago, but the bikes never actually had the badge on it. So it was obviously a pretty big deal for Colnago. Pogaccia used Campagnolo Bora WTO wheels, the Dada Alanira integrated bar, which by the way, has an absolutely astronomical price tag, a Pro Logo Scratch M5 saddle. No details were spared on this celebratory bike that was personally checked by Ernesto Colnago himself before it was rushed to Paris for stage 21. 
It was complete with a yellow seat tube, bar tape, and yellow look Keo blade carbon pedals with 20 Newton meter blades. Try and get your foot out of them. You're not gonna do it in a hurry. Matt gave this one an eight, Stu a seven, Tass a six, because she loves giving it lower than anyone else. And I'm gonna give it a 7.5. The Italian affair gets strong marks all round. What are you gonna give it? Let us know in the comment section below, as well as if it's your favorite. Last year, Jumbo Visma raced the Tour de France on a yet to be announced update to the Cervelo S5. Fortunately, Cervelo had a full yellow S5 frame set tucked away in a van for its final stage, which was built up for Vingegaard when he sealed Victor on the penultimate stage. There's a bit of a theme happening here, isn't there? A brand new Shimano Durace R9200 group set was installed on the glossy frame. The bike was equipped with R9200P power meter cranks from Shimano and Durace pedals as well. The Durace theme continued with the wheels, with the mechanics installing the C60 for the fast laps on the Champs Elysees. I'd love to ride around the Champs Elysees, but without all the traffic. Adding to the special paint job is the phrase Jonas Vinder Gult. I probably said that horrendously. I'm very sorry to anyone Danish out there. Anyway, it means, I think, Jonas wins yellow, which, well, let us know in the comment section below if you can translate from Danish. Matt's gonna give this one a six, Stu an eight, Tass a five, and I'm gonna say an eight. I'm a fan and it looks good next to Wout's green S5 really does. Annemiek van Vluten rode to victory at the first Tour de France Femmes in 2022, winning the week-long race by nearly four minutes. Van Vluten used her Aero Canyon Aero CFR throughout the Tour de France Femmes rather than going for the lighter Ultima and started the final stage on this yellow bike. This was complete with yellow bar tape, wheel and group set decals and even a gold chain. Van Vluten's bike was equipped with SRAM Red AXS group set and a quark power meter chain set with 52 39 tooth chain rings. He was also using Zip 303 Firecrest wheels and a Vizik Fento Argo 00 short nose saddle. Matt gives this one a six, Stu a seven, Tass an eight, and Andrew, what are you gonna give it? Seven. Seven, crikey. And of course, then there's this latest addition to the list, Jonas Vingegaard's second all yellow Cervelo S5. This year's differs a bit from his one in 2022. For starters, it's got a SRAM red group set instead of Shimano. And secondly, it's running reserve wheels again instead of Shimano. The majority of mountain stages were undertaken on a Cervelo R5, the Canadian's lightweight race bike. But Vingegaard used this S5 in earnest several times during this year's tour, including on the penultimate mountain stage, when he fairly foolishly tried to out sprint a resurgent Pogaccia. It was on the first and last stage of the tour though that the Danish rider used this one by setup, a trend that appears to be becoming far more common in the pro peloton, especially at Jumbo Visma. In the official press release photos, the bike is blinged up with this gold chain and cassette, but by the time Vingegaard made it to Paris, he was on a more traditional, albeit one by silver affair. Other accents include the yellow reserve wheel stickers and of course the word Jonas on the seat tube, a play on Vingegaard's first name Jonas and Jorn, French for yellow. Vingegaard sticks to his usual Physique Vento Antares 00, 00 saddle, Townwall Vittoria Corsa Pro tubeless tyres and shifters which look far more like SRAM Force AXS than SRAM Red. What do you think of this build? Have Cervelo and Jumbo Visma found a winning strategy or do you think they should have changed it up and gone for something a bit more different to last year? Let us know in the comments section below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel then well why not and um, please do and give this video a like if you enjoyed this sort of content and we'll see you next time. <laughs> All these big questions. If you're going uphill, then your headwind, I guess, isn't coming from straight on, because yeah. that means it's coming th through the hill. Yeah. It must be coming down the hill. But then when you're going downhill, it must be coming head on. I wonder if bike designers are thinking of these things. They should be.